so before we start, I just want to say I'm not going to be doing the whole match because it's way too long. I'll just be doing like key moments and then the whole third period because in the first 15 seconds of the match. So let's take another look at that. Alright, so right here, Martin does a nice setup, like taps the head, gets a good setup going, and takes a good shot, good penetration, gets to the leg, one hand on the side. And then Bonico does a good job of sprawling and really putting pressure into Martin. So Martin kind of has to pop out. And then Nickel ends up getting an overhook, two overhooks. Tries to trip. Ends up landing on his back right there. Ends up landing right on his back. And then kind of like loses the grip. And Martin just like reverses him kind of. He just steps over. And uh, if we take another look at that from another angle, it's pretty... Martin, he kind of like... He did a good job of sprawling. Great defense by Nickel. And a good trip lands like right on his back and like kind of like his butt and then he loses the grip of the overhook Martin kind of just like rips it out so then Martin can like brace himself with that right hand and then end up on top of Bo Nickel get those two points the underhook so kind of like punches that underhook in like right about now puts his hand on the collar and then punches that underhook in then from there, puts a lot of pressure into that right side, really opens it up, then switches to that left side, grabs the leg, so he can't really sprawl, and then, like, I hate that feeling, because I'm, like, a really defensive wrestler, and, like, when they grab your leg and you can't sprawl, so that's exactly what he did, put a lot of pressure on one side, then grab the other side, and there's, like, no way you can defend that, really, just textbook attack by Bo Nickel right there, Martin doing a good job, look at that, because this was, like, the turning point in the match. Nickel is still winning at this point. So let's go all the way back. So first of all, good setup by Martin. Taps that head, gets him distracted. Gets him distracted and then shoots to those legs before Nickel can really defend that well. Nickel still does a good job with that sprawl. Kind of just rips Martin's hands up off of his legs and gets an underhook. And he tries to do the same move, but this time he's not able to get as much pressure with that underhook as he was in the beginning. Martin's kind of like pushing on his side this time. So he's not able to get that much pressure. And Martin keeps his leg away. Makes a nice big step with that left leg. So it's harder for him to grab. So now Bo Nickel, he didn't put enough pressure on that underhook because Martin was expecting it. So now he really has to commit to that move and kind of like force it. So he tries to force it. He tries to force it. He puts like enough force to like almost actually do it right here. Gets the trip. Gets the ankle now. And he's really trying to force it. He's trying to force it. He's putting like a bunch of pressure. And then he didn't expect Martin to just flip it on him. So that's basically what happened. Bonico overcommitted to that move. Shouldn't have tried to force it right there. Mark, Martin just doing like a fundamental wrestling. Wrestling move right there. Just using his opponent's weight and pressure against him. Ends up getting him on his back. And that leg, that right leg right there. is what got him that near fall. Ends up going up, I think, 9-4. to four. Breakdown, it's just tech six stand ups at the college level. Those it's really I'm not landing on his back. So let's take a look on why that one worked and the other one didn't work. So, still double over, it's just inside, not outside this time. But the main difference is that number one, he didn't land on his butt and back that much. He landed on his back a little bit, but as soon as he did, he kind of bridged out, rolled over. And secondly, what was the most like important thing that let Martin reverse him last time is that he kept both hands he kept both hands kept the grip martin wasn't able to like squirm fury and break him brace himself so that's why martin wasn't able to get any points on this move and bo nickel was able to take dolling nickel tries to hit like a chin whip but martin does a good job countering by reaching underneath the legs which would have thrown nickel over if nickel had forced that move so nickel just lets go of it then basically just cuts martin because martin's just stolen takes a while but I yeah, thought he would win that match coming in as the 11th seed but what really won that match was that that first counter and that second counter really fundamentals first one if we take one more look at that kind of bonicle landed on his like his back martin ripped his arm out braced himself with that right hand and landed on top of him and then that second one is also what kind of decided the match Nickel overcommitted to it, and Martin knew it was coming, kept his leg away, and at the last second, just switched the momentum on Nickel, ended up getting him on his back. And um, yeah, so basically those are main things for this match. Use your opponent's momentum against him, and basically this match is just one on counters. 
So a really great example of defensive wrestling by Martin there. And he still was taking shots, but that kind of shows why he needs to be balanced. Because Martin, Martin, like, he did take shots and they didn't go through, but then those counters is what won the match. And, um, yeah, that's basically going to wrap it up for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, comment down below, and sub for more wrestling shots like this. Also, follow our Instagram. Like, leave it here or something. And, uh, yeah, peace.